Man, I did not want to cut off that song. I'm sorry that I was responsible for that. Buenos dias. Thank you very much, Ian. Uh, and that was a great interview with our Sustainable Communities Program Director, Andrea Matpillero Colomina, and Secretary of Transportation, P Pete Buttigieg. Another great session on top of a fantastic summit that I hope you all are enjoying. Wasn't last night performance amazing? That spoken word really moved me. In addition to enjoying the, enjoying the plenaries and breakout sessions and social events, make sure that you're taking the time to meet each other, to network, and, and make sure you're filling out your summit bingo sheet. And that overall, you're coming out of this with new relationships so that we can work together. My name is Mark Magana, and I'm the founding president and CEO of Green Latinos. I'm coming to you today from the stolen lands and broken treaties of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho in Boulder, Colorado. Exactly three weeks ago today, the day before New Year's Eve, at this very hour that I'm speaking, a grass fire started here in Boulder. And in a normal situation, that fire would have been easily put out. But Boulder, like many communities in the Great Plains, is in the midst of a long drought and our land is dry. You add to that the complete lack of snow at this time of year, which is unusual, and wildly high winds gusting up to 100 miles per hour, and you have all the tinder needed for a climate-induced disaster. <clears throat> our community and others have already gotten so used to devastating fires in the summertime that we just call it wildfire season, and it, it blows my mind the lengths we go to adapt to the dangers of the climate crisis that we face and normalize them as just seasonal expectations, hurricane season, flood season. But a wintertime grass fire turning into a 100 mile per hour firestorm was new to everyone here. It took out over a thousand suburban homes and businesses in a fiery hellscape within a couple of hours. We were in LA for the holidays, but we flew back home from LA the next day. Fortunately, we were just outside the perimeter and we only suffered infrastructure wind damage to our property. The wind ripped out eight foot high wood fencing right out of the ground. Several friends were not as fortunate with many of them losing their homes. Wildfires, high winds, droughts, hurricanes, floods, pandemics. La Madre Tierra is screaming out now. Burning, drowning, gasping for water, struggling violently to survive, lashing out, knowing that in order to survive, she's gonna have to shake many of us off her. And it's not that there are too many of us living on her, it's that too many of us are living in industrialized countries, and we say that with such pride, and have forgotten how to live sustainably as our ancestors did. La Madre will survive. The question is, will we? Our ancestors lived off the land, and they had a symbiotic one-to-one -one relationship with the land with immediate feedback. You knew you had to leave the land better than you received it, as I heard many times this week. Our ancestors, my abuelos, sacrificed everything to leave their homes and farms in Mexico and travel to El Norte looking for a better life for them and their children. We now see daily streams of people, mostly from the drought-besieged area in the Northern Triangle region of Central America. Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, traveling thousands of miles with their children strapped to their backs, suffering unknown hardships, all to find not necessarily a better way of life, but searching for a way for their children to survive. Many of these climate migrants are unable to grow their sustenance crops, their corn, their rice, their beans, their coffee, because the drought has made their land arid and unusable. The th sacrifice that our parents and grandparents made for us now on our shoulders? Are we ready 
to sacrifice our time, our comfort, our security for our children. Now is the time when history demands that we do what our ancestors have always done. I call it sacrifice, but we don't do this alone. We do this in community. We do it with food, with music, with dancing, and with love, because that's how we roll. But we alone are not enough. As Jacob Johns told us on the first day, he said, it is our co connection as humans on this planet that is our common denominator. The common air we all breathe. We're all walking together on our mother. We are people all together with commonality. But there are people out there destroying, perverting, exploiting, and trying to dominate Mother Earth. We have to stand up with each other and not accept things the way they are. We are working to save ourselves and save the future of humanity, and we need to do it together. We cannot be separated from each other. We must work in a place of harmony and solidarity. It is our children's 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 children that want us to succeed. So, we must join with the broader global community to overcome this ex existential crisis, and we must do it so urgently. But in, in order to truly come together with the broader community, we need to do the work to address the prejudices in our community. And yes, every community has its prejudices, but we are the only ones that can work on ours. We, as an organization, must do more to fight back on anti-Black and anti-Indigenous prejudices, racism, and colorism. And as historically pervasive and corrosive as they are, they're not the only work that we need to do. We must also come together to fight the serious problem of paternalism and misogyny, homophobia, classism, ableism, and religious intolerance in our communities. We have to do this actively, and we must do so quickly before we become a part of the problem. And our beloved Latino, Latina, Latinx community is even more marginalized as white passing and other people of color. We must also deal with our own internalized oppression that can lead us to lose our own ethnic pride to the point of becoming ashamed of who we are. At our 2019 summit, the amazing Latina leader, Nancy Luna Jimenez, taught us that we live in a society that doesn't deal with nor address feelings or emotions as part of oppression. And as a result, we will replay them against ourselves and against people who have less power than we do. To interrupt the cycle of oppression, we will need to recognize how we were hurt and commit to heal from internalized messaging of discouragement, helplessness, or powerlessness. This internalized oppression can make us complacent and docile, thinking that we are not deserving of any special attention to our needs. But our elder, Richard Moore, told us yesterday, we as Latinos must never allow ourselves to become the invisible population. That we deserve to put our issues on the table as much as any other group and be present at every table. <clears throat> and while environmental justice is the goal, systemic racism is the issue. Our elders spilled their blood to get us that spot at the table and we and it should not be given up so easily i am here today saying that there is plenty to be grateful for i'm grateful to be alive i'm grateful that we still have a home heat in the winter food and water and that we're all safe I'm grateful that we have snow 
which means we have some water for next summer. I'm grateful for my family and my friends, for my staff, for sponsors and partners, and I'm grateful for all of you. Mi gente, mi comunidad. Right now we find ourselves in historical fights, defending the basic tenets of society and life. We're fighting for our democracy, our self-determination, our mere existence as a people, all at the same time. And it's at moments like this that history tells us what we need to do. I mean, just look at some of the things that we've been able to accomplish in this country in the last 200 years with massive and sustained popular uprising. The abolitionist movement to end slavery with Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, the women's suffrage movement to give women the right to vote with Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, and the farm worker movement with Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. I might be so bold as to propose that we are lucky to be alive during a time of great social upheaval and change. We alive now, are the first generation to feel the effects of climate change and the last to be able to do anything about it. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the Nobel Peace Prize winning former president of Liberia said, future generations will judge us, not by what we say, but by what we do. So when your children, your grandchildren, your nephews and your nieces <clears throat> ask, what did you do? What did you do when you had a chance to protect my future? What did you do when you had a chance to protect my children's future? What did you do? You, you must be able to look them in the eye. You must be able to say, I was there. I was in the march. I was in the sit-in. I was on the bridge. I was building the garden. I was planting trees. I was helping the community. I was organizing. I was in the fight. I faced the dogs. I got sprayed. I was handcuffed. And I got arrested. And there were millions of us out there every day. For years, and it was glorious. And when it was safe, you were there too, on my shoulders. And those experiences, mija, mijo, sobrina, sobrina, they made you the loving warrior you are today. Mi gente, this is just the beginning of our adventure together. Vamos. Let's go. Thank you.